What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So I just finished watching Extreme Rules with the homie Dub. Man, we had a good time on the In The Clutch page, man. If you missed out on our live stream and reactions of Extreme Rules, definitely go check it out. It's still up on the main page. But we had a good time, man. It, it, was, it was fantastic. Love everyone that was in the chat and that was involved. This was overall a fun show. I enjoyed it for the most part. We got to talk about some things. You know what we got to talk about. Um, it's, 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 it's one of those things where I can say Triple H gave us another good showing, another good pay-per-view in my opinion. But let's get right into it. No more, you know, of the intro. Let's talk about what went down. So we got to start with the Brawling Brutes versus Imperium in the old-fashioned Donnybrook match. Now, while we were trying to get the stream all situated, we were having some audio uh, issues, we were still watching the match, and the match, they started off hot. That was a great match, great placement. Crowd was into this one. This was a very fun, hard-hitting match. Uh, definitely reminding me of what happened on uh, this week, well, this previous week, Friday Night Smackdown between Gunther and and um and Sheamus they had another hard hitting match for the Intercontinental Championship. This match was all over the place. I I obviously I didn't really take notes. I'm just watching it. It was all over the place. It was hard hitting, it was carnage, and surprisingly I did get my predictions wrong wrong, but the Brawling Brutes got the win here. Uh Sheamus, you know, charged up, powered up, was able to put Walter through the table and then they ended up pinning one of his uh henchmen which keeps walter strong walter did not get well gunther you know did not get pinned he got thrown through a table and they pinned one of his henchmen that's to keep walter strong do i think they will have another match for the intercontinental championship i can see them having maybe one more but walter gunther didn't get pinned but overall that match was fun that's a great way to start off extreme rules it was a lot of carnage a lot of chaos i loved every second of it um definitely go check that out if you haven't already next smackdown's women championship match ronda rousey versus Liv morgan in an extreme rules match i'm gonna be honest with you guys this match was not that enjoyable uh the crowd kind of definitely died down from this match uh from the first one uh it had some moments but it, it really to be honest their their matches and their feud in itself wasn't that it, it never really took hold um the one noticeable thing about this match is ronda looks definitely like a heel it looked like it seemed like she turned full heel in this situation because for the longest she's been kind of riding the line of a tweener but Tonight, with the response she got and just her mannerisms, she seemed more like a heel. Even after she won the, the championship, she you could hear her voice like she audibly said, I didn't win this for y'all. I won this for myself. So um, it seems like Ronda is going to be more of a heel, which could probably work better for her character. But overall, I, I didn't go in there believing that Liv Morgan was all of a sudden going to be extreme. She literally came out there with a baseball bat with, but like, like it's like, came out there with like a kitty baseball bat with designs on it, and it looked all like, you know, just it didn't look like, oh, I'm about to beat somebody with this bat. It looks like more of like a, a Harley Quinn a bat, like you know, something you would have for a Harley Quinn costume for Halloween, and this would be one of her bats, like, not to be taken seriously. It'd be different if she came out there with a bat with barbed wire, but you know. <laughs> the point I'm trying to prove is it just she when she came out there I couldn't believe it within the match I really couldn't believe it and the crazy thing is uh, Ronda passed her out sent her to the gulag sent her in a, a, a deep sleep made her pass out which I'm all for and the weird thing is she woke up smiling like I don't I don't know she just woke up smiling like I don't know if they're gonna continue to maybe set up a match with them I don't want to see this honestly I think this should be done but they may set up one more match with them but I don't know I just honestly I I, I just didn't care for this match this this in my opinion just was the lowest point of the show but the right person won Ronda has the, the belt uh, I was wrong on the prediction here I thought uh, Liv was going to retain by some type of nefarious deeds or somebody was going to interfere but Ronda beat her within the rules and stipulations and sent her to the gulags in a peaceful sleep so 
that's how that ended. Um, the next match we have Drew McIntyre versus Karrion Cross, the strap match, man. Uh, this match was okay. It was kind of middle of the road. It wasn't that bad. Uh, Karrion Cross started off early with some heel tactics before the match even started. You knew uh, his wife uh, Scarlett was going to get involved throughout the match, which definitely happened. Uh, definitely those uh, strap, like the strap lashing. That that was pretty intense. You can hear the strap just just hitting the skin the the bare flesh that was pretty intense uh, it was a pretty good visual and the way it sounded the wilts i know they have definitely painful <laughs> the ending of the match comes in uh is uh, comes ahead when scarlet gets involved uh, i guess she used some type of mace and spray drew in the face and then um karen cross hits you know takes care of uh of um of drew mcintyre but as he's pinning him i guess some of the whatever spray ends up in carrying frost's face so he wins but he's over there trying to wipe his eyes too or whatever so inadvertently she sprayed some type of mace and it got him on carrying cross as well or whatnot you know it, that was a little funny segment but overall i expect it i i expect it carrying cross to win because you just don't book him to be this credible threat to only lose his first pay-per-view match back in WWE. Do I think this is over for them? No. I think Drew wants to get his run back, but I don't think he will succeed. They will probably have a match at Crown Jewel potentially. So, But overall, middle of the road. It, it, I expected a little bit better. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit better, but this was okay. It was serviceable at best. Um, not a bad match, but not something that you just be like, oh, I got to go watch it again. You know what I'm saying? So serviceable, middle of the road for me. Um, the next one. It's the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair versus uh, Bayley. Bianca's pretty much going out there by herself. Her, her, her allies have been taken out by Damage Control and Bayley. Um, I expected Bianca to overcome the odds because of how they just set things up these past couple of weeks. Was it a good Madden match? It, it was entertaining. It had some pretty good spots. Uh, they did they did a, they did pretty good. Um they really showcased Bianca Belair's strength. The fact that even though it was kind of a botch segment, Bianca was trying to carry both EO and and Dakota on her like shoulders, but they weren't in position, so they were in that spot a little bit too long. It was definitely botched, but the fact that she was able to get them up was fantastic. Now, the finish was kind of weird because you have Bianca about to go for her traditional split finish but she has the ladder on top of bailey over her shoulder and you can see bailey holding the ladder and now it would have made sense if she's holding the ladder but it would have probably been much harder for her to throw her so they probably should have did a different spot but when you see the spot and you're paying attention she, bailey's holding the ladder preparing to get hit with the finishing move by her opponent why would you hold the ladder? You know what I'm saying? So they probably should have did something else. But even then, that spot was brutal because Bailey couldn't really protect herself. Because soon as she went down, she's holding a ladder. She, her face hits the edge of the ladder. I think uh, maybe like some, you know, I don't know. I hope she didn't lose a tooth, but her mouth was bleeding. So that was kind of a dangerous spot. But other than that, um, it was still, it was still, uh, it was still an enjoyable match. It was still enjoyable. It made. Uh, Bianca looked very strong, and it, it it was it was cool. It was a cool ladder match. Nothing too crazy. The right person won. Uh, so at this point in the show, outside of the very first match, everything else was kind of middle of the road. At this point in the show, I was still enjoying myself. Uh, I was hoping for a little bit more in some of these matches, but nevertheless, it was it was serviceable outside of the first match in the Ronda and uh, Liv Morgan. But this this match next. This is when things, it just skyrocketed. This is where I felt like we were in some extreme rules territory. Edge versus Finn Balor, I quit match. What do I have to say? Easily the best match of the night. There's, there's no competition. This was the best match of the night. I was looking forward to this match, and I said this in my preview predictions. The only way Edge loses is if some beth phoenix gets involved and or someone gets involved and he has to say i quit to save them when i say 
Triple H, you've done a fine, a fantastic job of making me give any type of fucks about this whole Judgment Day group. What's going on with Ray and Dominic? You've actually made me care. Outside of the Bloodline stuff, this is this is probably the best stuff on the show, on in WWE television. He has made the Judgment Day, in my opinion, after what they did tonight, they are the biggest heels in the company they're the biggest heels they went from a joke of a squad to the biggest heels in the company dominic has never gotten a reaction like he's been getting as of late people despise him and hate him and i love it this was great it's an i quit match you don't get too many of them they're pretty much brawling all over the place trying to make each other say i quit but what really started ramping things up you knew judgment day was going to get involved they come out there with their shenanigans you knew it was going to happen then you hear ray come out there you see ray out there and before ray can even do anything bro before he can even do anything you know he gets taken down he gets taken out you knew real ripley was going to come out of nowhere she comes out of there. She has the handcuffs or whatnot. She ties up Edge. Edge is in a vulnerable situation. He's about to get mauled and jump. He does get mauled and jump. And that's, bro, they just set this up great. They set this up fantastically. Beth Phoenix comes into the mix. She starts beating the crap out of them with kendo sticks. Love this, by the way. I'm talking about Dominic was catching the beats too. Oh, this was so great. Rhea caught a beautiful spear by Beth Phoenix. Mm, chef's kiss. So fucking great. I'm losing it. If you haven't seen it on the stream, I'm marking out. I'm having a great time. I'm having fun right now at this point. Edge gets free. Another great moment. That boy Dominic out there trying to Uncle Edge me. You know, Uncle Edge is me. He's trying to plead his case. And... Shades of what happened at Clash at the Castle. Edge kicks him straight in the balls. Crowd loves it. But once again, Rhea goddamn Ripley comes out of nowhere with brass knucks. Knocks out. Knocks out Edge. Edge wife's Beth Phoenix. Now Edge is in a situation where, and I, I forgot to mention, my boy Finn Balor was getting sent to the gulags over and over and over. Edge was hitting spear after spear after spear on him. And then in retaliation, when the tides turned, Edge was hit with three coup de gras back to back to back. Stretched out. There was nothing he can do. He's still not quitting because it's Edge. You know he's not going to willingly quit. So they get the steel chairs. Beth Phoenix knocked out. They get the steel chairs. Edge signature, signature move for sending people to the gulags. They're about to hit the concerto on Edge's wife, Beth Phoenix, man. Edge is pleading. Now he's like, oh, shit. What am I going to do? He finally says, I quit. Obviously. Because Rhea's about to send her to the upper room. And probably one of the most savage things we've seen on WWE television in quite some time. After he says, I quit. Rhea says, fuck it. I'm sending her to the upper room anyway. And proceeds to hit her with a vicious concerto. And when I say I was shocked, I was floored, Dub was shocked, Dub was floored, the crowd gave them the best nuclear heat I have seen in so long. You don't get boos like this. They were booing them for about a good five to ten minutes straight. Boos. Great. Oh, my God. This was so good. Just a true team of hatred. I this was great. This was fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, this whole segment was great. Michael Cole's commentary. He was losing. He started cursing. Like, he was disgusted. They're like, yo, get somebody out here. This was fantastic. I thought I wanted this feud to end. I don't now. <laughs> I want Edge to get his, his run back. He, this story is going to continue, and I'm all for it. I, I'm all for it. I am all for it. I, I want to see Edge go to that place of no return now. I want to see Edge start taking people out one by one. 
I, this this was great, fantastic. If you have not watched this whole match, this whole segment, this is worth your time. This gave me extreme rules vibe. Fantastic, loved it. Best part of the show. All right, so we get to the main event: Seth Rollins versus uh versus uh Matt Riddle in the uh um the fight pit fight pit match with uh. With Daniel Cormier as guest referee. This match was okay. It was it was hard to compete with what we just saw. The emotions we just felt. It was hard to compete. There was there was really nothing they could do here. Um, there were some good spots, some good moments, but honestly, in my opinion, I, I think I think a lot of us can agree. I think the feud definitely needs to end here. They can leave it alone at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, the match was was serviceable. I, I was expecting maybe a little bit of blood, but the match was serviceable, kind of back and forth. Seth Rollins came out there with the RVD gear tribute. I thought that was pretty cool. He even did a little RVD chant from the like top of the cage area down to Matt Riddle. It was a cool little spot or whatnot. But um, I think the spot of the night, well, one of the spots of the night, um, well, and even in this match, is Matt Riddle jumping down from the top of the little cell area all the way down to Edge in a brutal spot. I don't know how, not Edge or Seth Rollins, but I don't know how Seth Rollins doesn't have, didn't have broken ribs. That spot was fantastic. Um, Daniel Cormier was definitely getting kind of rough with him, like pushing up against the cage, like I'm the referee. I'm like, God damn, bro, calm down. Um, but ultimately, Ultimately, Matt Riddle is able to get Seth uh, Seth Rollins to tap out. It was it was a cool little little moment, but I think people were really more excited to see what was going to happen after the match. Hell, throughout the match, they were saying, "Where's Wyatt?" So people weren't as invested in this because they were waiting for something at the end. So this match really wasn't gonna. I didn't think it was gonna really be able to take off like maybe they wanted to because people were already anticipating something else after the match and what we just saw previous but other than that it was still middle of the road uh it wasn't bad by any means maybe it probably could have serviced if this happened on monday night raw this probably would have been one of the better matches and segments on monday night raw but it's extreme rules so this this was more or less the middle of the road not too bad or anything like that but we know what people were wanting to see for months well for it seems like months but for weeks we've been seeing these little vignettes little qr codes little little secret secret things that you can find when you scan the qr codes we've been seeing bunnies walking around the shows we've been seeing a lot of things on social media and this is probably one of the more creative things they've done to repackage a wrestler again our lights go out as they're fading to black lights go out and then you hear in the sound system got the whole world in his hands you know it's bray the crowd's going crazy everybody got their flashlights out and it cuts to different parts of the stadium a spotlight of the firefly funhouse different characters that we know and recognize even the fiend was at ringside like with the mask one of the fiend masks was on the the commentary table and michael cole jumped out of the seat it was fucking fantastic then they cut to like a little uh, TV set. And then they cut into the old Firefly Funhouse set. Everything's dusty. Everything's gray. Well, not gray, but it's just everything's dusty and old. Like, no one's been there for a while, obviously, because Bray was fucking gone. And then there's just like this doorway or whatnot. You see this doorway on the ramp aisle. It opens up. And you see the lantern. And then you see Bray comes out there. He's behind this like this white mask. And he takes the mask off. And you see Bray Wyatt. And the crowd literally goes ape shit. It had to be Bray. If it wasn't going to be Bray, people were going to be pissed. It, it only made sense for it to be Bray. And it, it was great. That was a great way to end off the show. It, 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 it they, Bro, they... This is probably one of the better moments of them really taking time with marketing this and making sure people care because there's so many people that's been talking about this for fucking weeks and now they got the payoff that they wanted. Now it's going to be interesting to see what they do going forward, 
who does Bray Wyatt feud with? That is going to be the real question. What they do with Bray, I am actually very intrigued to see what's going to happen this Monday Night Raw, man. Uh, I, I am looking forward to it, so you know I'm going to be streaming that. Uh, but overall, the show for me, scale of 1 to 10, said on the on the, on the the uh, live stream reaction, I give this a solid 8 out of 10. The ending was fantastic. The I Quit match was fantastic. The first match of the night was great, too. The the Donnie Brook match, um, that, it, that definitely, they started off... Um, very hot with that one everything else was middle to the middle of the road not bad but not something that i'm just gonna oh i gotta go see again um there was some cool moments with these stipulations but outside of that everything else was just kind of middle of the road but those other segments fucking carried the show loved it for me i enjoyed it overall as an overall package eight out of ten so comment down below let me know are you guys excited that Bray Wyatt is back. What do you guys rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? Who do you guys think Bray Wyatt will feud with? What do you think is going to happen when Edge come back? And how should he take out all the members of the Judgment Day? And just let me know down below if you enjoyed this pay-per-view overall. I know I did. I know Dub did. I know everyone that was in the chat. You guys enjoyed it for the most part as well. But I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.